Good afternoon and thank you for joining us today with MK Local News and Awareness UK Free Briefing. I'm news reporter Dwayne Hart with MK Local News and Awareness UK Free. Thank you for joining us today. I want to start by informing you that to Tory MP attended lockdown barbecue with journalists. Well, that's really a disgrace. I mean, what government would do that? Seriously. Next, stalled vaccine programmes putting children's lives at risk. Services have been hit in Ni Niger. Millions of children could die from preventable disease of severe disruptions to vaccination programmes caused by coronavirus, experts warn. At least 68 countries have been affected with some stopping vaccination campaigns completely. The World Health Organisation, WHO, advised many countries to suspend vaccinations to help slow the spread of coronavirus. Rightly so. Well done, WHO. But now, it is one of the several groups ex expressing concern about the long-term impact. Exactly. United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, the Sabin Vaccine Institute and Gavi, the Vaccine Alliance, are also worried thousands of children every day could die needlessly. There are a number of reasons vaccination services have been so badly disrupted, including parents' fear of catching COVID-19 if they leave the house, health workers being diverted to deal with a pandemic, problems getting vaccine supplies to clinics, measles is on the rise, Dip, diplipheria, cholera, United Nations Children's Fund UNICEF, Ex Executor Director, Henrietta Four says, so this is going to be a real problem. As a world, we have con 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 conquered many of these preventable diseases for children. Now, there are great concerns. These gains could be wiped away. In a usually packed cl clinic in Niger's capital, namely the waiting room is quiet. There have been almost 1,000 COVID-19 cases reported in the country, or more. But polio, which can cause paralysis or even death is also making a comeback. Four new cases have been reported since February. Sinabu Tahiru sits in pink headscarf and a blue mask cradling her, cradling her baby girl Fadila. I was so scared to come here because of a coronavirus she says. Do you know what? I can't blame you. But health workers have told me how important these Im immunisations are and also what I need to do to stay safe, like washing my hands all the time. At least 80 million under the age of one are at risk. Oh, crikey. Estimated number of babies missing routine vaccinations because of the coronavirus pandemic. Southeast Asia, 34.8 million. Africa, 22.9 million. Oh. Current outbreaks of preventable deadly diseases. Nepal and Cambodia, measles. Ethiopia, measles, co co cholera and yellow fever. Source, the WHO, UNICEF, Sabine Vaccine Institute and Gavi, the Vaccine Alliance. Recent modelling by John Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health suggests disruption to these kinds of crucial health services for women and children could result in as many as 6,000 additional children dying. Every day, what we fully expect in, <clears throat> is these diseases will come roaring back. WHO Immunisations and Vaccines D Department Head Kate O'Brien says, at what that means is that we're going to see deaths of children in numbers that are unprecedented in recent times, but this potentially devastating situation can kill prevented. If government acts now, which they won't, obviously. UK has passed 40,000 COVID-19 coronavirus within rules on where face coverings must be used, says UK doctors. Some people across Britain, including here in Manchester, already choose to wear masks. Doctors have urged the government to wear face coverings compulsory in all places where social distancing is not possible, not just on public transport. All passengers on public transport in England 
must wear a face covering from the 15th of June, the government said on Thursday. It also said the risk of from coronavirus would be much less if the rule started now, not later in the month. Face coverings, which can be homemade, but not as good, obviously, must be worn on buses, trams, trains, coaches, aircraft and ferries. Passengers will not be allowed to travel without one, and if they do not wear one, they could be fined. Very young children, disabled people, and those with breathing difficulties will be exempt. There's always some of these exempts, but this one's a good situation. Coronavirus. Court action threatened over school meal vouchers. Really? There's much more bigger things going on in the world rather than just a silly lawsuit over a school dinner. There's only government guidance, really. Anyway, campaigners have threatened to bring legal action <laughs> against the government for not providing free school meal vouchers during the summer. Oh, no, bless. Normally, children only get free meals from school during term time. But eligible pupils receive food vouchers over Easter as the country coped with Covid crisis. The Department for Education said the scheme will not continue in the summer holidays, but campaigners say children in vulnerable families will go hungry. They have written to the Department of Education, threatening to bring a ju judicial review of the decision. The letter was sent by for food charity Sustain and the Good Law Project, led by the campaigning lawyer, Jolian Morgan. Kath Dalmini of Sustain said, I have spent hours and hours and hours of my time on Zoom meetings, on phone calls, trying to get this issue, issue noticed by all other means. That has not worked, and so we must make people take this seriously. But no legal challenge has yet begun convenient isn't it they do not yet have a court date on the funds to complete a case and many attempted judicial reviews fail not a surprise the voucher scheme had cost more than 129 million in england already and is worth 15 pound per week for each eligible child ministers are responding to fears that children on free school meals could go hungry coronavirus doctors diary for older doctors risking their lives to battle COVID-19. Before his illness, Alex Brown sits patiently as hospital staff practice fitting a CPAP ventilator. There has been a huge surge of interest in becoming in a medic during this pandemic, despite the fact that those on the front line have a high risk of catching the virus. Dr John Wright of Bradford Royal in Family writes about two colleagues who decided to become doctors later in life and were hit hard when they came down with COVID-19. That's really sad, really. This has been a time where the quiet men and women staff in the NHS and care homes have stepped out of the shadows and into the spotlight. They have served their country and cared for their communities, putting their lives at risk in the process. One million people answered the call to volunteer to help the NHS in this time of crisis. Thousands have expressed interest in becoming a nurse and many young people have contacted the Bradford Royal Infirmary to ask whether our carers' outreach sessions will resume. Becoming a doctor or a nurse or a, pub, um, or a healthcare worker has never seemed to, so important and it doesn't matter how old you are or what you have been doing. It's rarely too late to follow your heart. Two of my colleagues, consultant, geriatrician, Professor Alex Brown and orthopaedic register, registrar Ken Linton came to medicine after careers with the military and banking. <coughs> Alex served as an army campaign in Northern Ireland and the Falklands, while Ken was a vice president of Laham Brothers. <clears throat> investment bank until a few months before it collapsed in 2008 at 61. At 54, they were at higher risk than many of the developing serious symptoms. If they caught COVID-19, and sure enough, they eventually become patients in their own hospital. Oof. 
Alex Brown <coughs> in uniform, the comedy mash drew him towards medicine. For anyone who thinks that COVID is a, simply a flu-like illness, I now point to Alex as an illustration of how it can bring a tough, stoical ex army man to his knees. Alex was aware of the risk he was taking, being older and male, a bit overweight, but it didn't stop him. You've got just got to get on and do what you're, you've got to do, he says. That is true. He also knew that there was no rapid test that would enable us to instantly determine which patients had COVID-19 and wh wh what not and which did, which did not. So while we divided hosp the hospital into a red infectious zone and a green zone for non-COVID patients, we were never going to get it 100% right. I wrote 10 days ago about Mark Winterbourne, to, who tested positive after being admitted with what initially appeared to be gallstone problems. And as Alex points out, the level of PPE that we wear is dependent upon what stocks are available. When PPE was scarce, Alex Brown organised this delivery of masks, care home staff to get £500 bonus for vital work. Number of COVID hospital patients falls below 1,000. For the time since the end of March, the number of hospital patients in Scotland, because they're a better country, with confirmed or suspected COVID-19, has fallen below 1,000. Congratulations, Sturgeon. There are currently 676 confirmed cases and 319 suspected cases. For more facts and figures about the virus and how they have changed in recent weeks, Visit gov.scot, G-O-V dot S-C-O-T. Crime returned to usual levels as lockdown eased. Chief Constable Ian Livingstone said last weekend was business as usual for his officers. <laughs> Coronavirus. Thousands of homeless back on the streets by July. Thousands of homeless people who have been housed during the coronavirus pandemic could return to the streets by the end of June, a charity has warned. Since the lockdown began, more than 14,500 people who were on the streets or at risk of sleeping rough have been given emergency accommodation. But crisis has warned contracts between local councils and hotels are, to end, are due to end as government funding runs out. The government said councils must continue to provide accommodation. But council have asked the government to be clear on what extra practical support they will get. Local authorities in England begin moving rough sleepers into emergency accommodation, such as hotels in March, after the start of a coronavirus lockdown, COVID-19 strain. The councils were given £3.2 million from the government as part of an emergency scheme called Everyone in Which was aimed at stopping the spread of the virus. But earlier this month, it emerged government funding for that scheme would was to end. The government said it had given councils an extra £3.2 billion pounds. Wow. in funding to help them deal with a pandemic. Even that's not enough money for them to be ungrateful. Although that money is not specifically for the emergency rough sleeping scheme. Crisis called the action to house rough sleepers over the past weeks extraordinary, adding, this has demonstrated that when the political will is there, it is possible to end homelessness. While the charity said the government should take further action to prevent everyone with permanent housing. Warning, that is not people will be forced to return to the streets. Opening schools and educational settings to more pupils from the 1st of June. Guidance for parents and carers since the 23rd of March in line with scientific advice. Nursery schools and colleges have remained open to a priority of group of children and young people. Children are critical workers and Vulnerable children. We have been clear that we would review this arrangement in line with scientific advice. We are now past the peak of the virus and the Prime Minister has set out a recovery strategy while also ensuring that safety remains our absolute priority. This means it is time to begin the phased return of children and young people to nurseries, schools and colleges in a way that is measured, reduces risks and it's guided by, guided by science. Why can more children now attend school and childcare settings? We want, we want to get all children 
now to attend school and childcare settings. I'm sorry to chime in here, but because I want you to do something, it doesn't make it law. I want people to do a lot of things, but I haven't got them, so it's not law. We want to get all children back into education as soon as the scientific advice allows, because it is the best place for them to learn, and because we know it is good for children's mental well-being. Do you have social interactions with other children, carers and teachers? As a result of the huge efforts everyone has made, I don't really care what you want, Mr Government, to adhere to strict social distancing measures. The government's five tests have been met, yeah, right. meaning we can move forward with modifying measures which have been in place, based on all the evidence from the week commencing the 1st of June. Yeah, that's your good day, isn't it? We can welcome back more children to early years and primary school settings, and from the 15th of June to secondary school and further educational settings, schools, colleges and childcare providers have been planning on this basis and the confirmation this, that this could go ahead was provided by the Prime Minister on the 28th of May. What does the latest scientific advice say? We have been guided by scientific advice at every stage. The latest scientific advice to government is that there is a high scientific confidence that children of all ages have less severe symptoms than adults if they can track coronavirus strain COVID-19 and there is moderately high scientific confidence that younger children are less likely to become unwell if infected with coronavirus COVID-19. Limiting the numbers of children going back to school and college initially when gradually increasing numbers guided by scientific advice, reduces risk of increasing the rate of transmission. Schools and other settings can make changes to how they are organised and put measures in place to risks. We have provided to schools and other settings on the steps they should consider taking. This includes limiting the amount of contact between different groups of children, such as smaller class sizes with children and staff spread out more. Additional protective measures such as increased cleaning and encouraging good hand and respiratory hygiene. Can my child return to school from the week commencing the 1st of June? We are asking nurseries and other early year providers, including childminders, to begin welcoming back all children, primary schools and alternative provision, to welcome back children in nursery where they have them, reception year one and year six, all schools and childcare providers to continue to offer places to the priority groups. Vulnerable children, that's, discrimin that's discriminating. Children of critical workers, they have been supporting since the end of March. Special schools, special post-16 institutions and hospital schools to work towards the phased return of more children and young people without a focus on specific year groups and informed by, mis by risk assessments. From the, 14th, from the 15th of June, we are asking secondary schools, sixth form and further education colleges to begin offering some face-to-face -face support to year 10 and 12 pupils to supplement their remote education, which should remain the predominant mode of education during this term. Alternative provision to begin some face-to-face -face support with year 10 and 11 pupils, as they have no year 12 this approach aims to limit numbers within schools and further education settings while ensuring that the children and young people who can benefit from attending most are able to do so. Can my child return to school? From the week commencing the 1st of June, we are asking nurseries and other early year providers, including childminders, to begin welcoming back all, all children, primary schools and alternative provision, to welcome back children in nursery where they have them um, reception year one and year six. All schools and childcare providers do continue to offer places to the priority groups, vulnerable children and children of critical workers. They have been supporting since the end of March. Special schools, special post institutions and hospital schools do work towards a phased return of more children and young people without a focus on specific year groups and informed by risk assessments. From the 15th of June, we are asking secondary schools, sixth form and further education colleges to begin offering some face-to-face -face support for year 10 and 12 pupils 
to supplement their remote education, which should remain their predominant mode of education during this term. Alternative provision to begin some face-to-face -face support with year 10 and 11 pupils, as they have no year tw 12. This approach aims to limit numbers within schools and further education settings, while ensuring that the children and young people who can benefit from attending most are able to do so. Can children be tested for the virus? Yeah. Children and young people and staff in all settings are eligible for testing if they become ill with coronavirus. Oh, well, Mr Pinocchio, we need to know if you're ill first by the test. COVID-19 symptoms, as are members of their household, this will enable children and young people to get back to childcare or education and their parents or carers to get back to work if a test proves to be negative. A positive test will ensure rapid action to protect their classmates and staff in their setting. What happens if there is a confirmed case of coronavirus COVID-19 in my child's school, college or childcare setting? When a child, young person or staff member develops symptoms compatible with coronavirus COVID-19, they should be sent home and advised to self-isolate for 40 for seven days. Their fellow household members should self-isolate for 14 days. Hey, All staff and students will have access to a test if they display symptoms of coronavirus COVID-19. Well, Mr Pinocchio slash Mr Government, that doesn't make sense what you've put on your guidance. When the child, young person or staff member tests positive, the rest of their class slash group within their childcare or education setting should be sent home and advised to self-isolate for 14 days. The other household members of that wider class slash group do not need to self-isolate unless the child, young person or staff member they live with in that group subsequently develop symptoms. As part of a national test and trace programme, if other cases are detected within the child or young person's co cohort or in the wider education or child care setting, Public Health England's local health protection teams will conduct a rapid investigation and will advise schools and other ed settings on the most appropriate action to take. In some cases, a larger number of or other children and young people may be asked to, to self-isolate at home as a precautionary measure, perhaps for a whole class, site or year group. Where settings are observing guidance on infection preventing and control, which will reduce risk of transmission, Closure of the whole setting will not generally be necessary. Will children be provided as normal to will education be provided as normal to children and young people who are attending? Education settings still have the flexibility to provide support and education to children and young people. Attending school in the way they see fit during this time. How should my child travel to and from their childcare school or college? Children, young people and parents are encouraged to walk or cycle where possible and avoid public transport at peak times. You can refer to the government's guidance on safe travel, particularly on transport. Stay alert. We can all help control the virus if we all stay alert. This means you must stay at home as much as possible. Work from home if you can. Keep Limit your contact with other people. But what about special schools? <sighs> Pinocchio. Keep your distance if you go out two metres apart where possible. Wash your hands regularly. Do not leave your home if you or anyone in your household has symptoms. Here's a question for you. When does social distancing apply if you're a student in an SEN school? Well, the teachers decide only when they say it does. Because it's okay if students want to cuddle each other wrongly. If they want to cuddle each other and they don't even keep two metres distance because they're a bit silly and they can't remember how to social distance, which even a three-year-old would understand. Before the Act came into force, there were several pieces of legislation to cover, discriminating including Sex Discrimination Act 1975, Race Relations Act 1976, Disability Discrimination Act 1955. Don't believe me which are now legislated. 1.1. 1. 1. What can I do that I couldn't do before? There are a limited number of additional things you can do in England that you could not do before. 
spending time outdoors, including private gardens and other outdoor spaces. <laughs> in groups of up to six people from different households following social distancing guidelines. Visit car showrooms and outdoor markets. In line with the arrangements made by your school, send your child to school or nursery if they are in early years, reception, year one or year six, if you could not, not before. If you are an elite athlete, as defined by the guidance, train and compete using the specific, specified gyms, pools and sports facilities you need, which will enable others to watch your live sport on TV. Well, you must be famous, everybody in the country, then, to do that. At all times, you should consider to adhere to strict social distancing. Well, it doesn't apply to teachers and students in SEN schools, clearly, and primary schools, because students think they can get on top of each other like they're kissing or something, because it doesn't apply to them, because they're special. Guidelines. When you are outside your home, particularly ensuring you are two metres away from anyone outside your household, you cannot visit friends and family inside their homes. Well, that, that, does that apply to teachers from SEN schools trying to force students to go to school? Well, clearly not, because you're a teacher, you're above the law, aren't you? Clearly. Stay overnight away from your own home, except for in a limited set of circumstances, such as for work purposes. Exercise in an indoor sports court, gym or leisure centre, or go swimming in a public pool. Use an outdoor gym or playground. Gather outdoors in a group of more than six, include, excluding members of your own household. I think that particularly in special schools, they are discriminating against your rights under the Disability Discrimination Act 2010. The Equality Act says so, the Equality Act 2010. They are treating disability students differently and calling them vulnerable, which is an insult in some ways towards somebody with those needs, which particularly means that you're bullying somebody, the whole government are bullying our nation of people with disabilities because they have to go to school, which is not even law, but we are the same as everybody else and we will protest for our rights. Use our hashtag, hashtag MKLN, stick up for disability free. That's our hashtag. So don't let people mug you around because of your disability. Always use hand sanitizer. Make sure you rub it in properly as well. Always use hand sanitizer when you're going outside, when you touch something, or when you've eaten. Oh, some now. Thank you for joining me today on today's briefing with MK Local News and Awareness UK Free. I am news reporter Dwayne Hards. Thank you for joining today's briefing. I will now bring today's daily briefing to an end. Goodbye. Thank you for joining us today. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already and share this video to get all of this awareness out there. Thank you very much. Goodbye.